It's a pleasure for me to welcome our next presenter, Kalila Reynolds, who almost got me in trouble the last time she was here uh, with my wife. And I know this is the Spice Up Your Life series, but get your head out of the gutters, people. She came with some very informative information about, um, you call it the envelope rule, wasn't it? Mm -hmm. Or the envelope concept. We were and talking about budgeting. We were yes. talking about budgeting. And I went home and I went to my mom and I got all her old envelopes from the house and brought them home and packed them up on the dresser. And my wife came home furious. What are all these old stuff packed up? <laughs> So I had to explain to her the whole concept um, about uh, the envelope concept that I learned. So that was the trouble that you got me in, mm. right? Uh, so uh, here we have with us Kalila Reynolds, who is an award-winning journalist specializing in business and finance. Her many social media features and podcasts are gaining rapid popularity Our user, as users are attracted to her unique ability to make business, finance, and economic news engaging and easy to understand. That's the key, not just engaging, but that it's easy to understand. Since 2014 to 2020, Kalila hosted the number one rated news and current affairs morning radio show on Nationwide News Network, where she is the business and finance editor and is considered Jamaica's leading and most influential business and finance journalist. Welcome, Kalila. Thank you very much, Craig. And just a little update. I'm not the business and finance editor anymore at NNN, okay. so I've been on my own since October of 2020. I'm now CEO of Kalila Reynolds Media Limited, where I like to describe myself as the chief evangelist, <laughs> the chief financial <laughs> evangelist, because we go tell it on the mountain. We spread yes. the good news about investing, finance, and how you can renovate your finance, for example, mm -hmm. as is the topic of today's presentation, today's right. webinar. So I have a lot of great tips to share with you today. I could talk about this stuff all day, literally, Craig. And don't blame me yeah. for what you in trouble with your wife. That's own business. Right. I don't I have anything to do with that <laughs> at all. All right, so how do you renovate your finances? How do you change from being in debt and just having these dreams to you know living a prosperous and fruitful life and, and accomplishing your dreams? Well, it all starts with having a vision. So the first thing that I want you to do is envision the life and the lifestyle that you would have. If you had you know, the world of money, what would you like to have? And even if it's not the world of money, even if it's mm -hmm. a fairly simple dream of just you know, owning your own home, or what they used to say was the American dream, the white picket fence, the two kids and the dog, even if it's something like sending your children to college, uh, going on vacation each year, what is your ideal life? So the first thing it starts with is having a vision and having a goal. Write it down. Set those goals for yourself on paper. And then do a little research as to what these goals are going to cost. If you want to retire at the age of 40, how much money do you have to have saved up for you to be able to do that, to live off just your of the income that you have accumulated and your investments and so on. So put, assign a monetary value to your goals. Now the next thing we're gonna do is make a plan to get there. Now, the number one thing holding people back from accomplishing these dreams, well yes, there's fear, but I think another big one is also debt. A lot of people are in a lot of debt. So you need to figure out what you're going to do about all of this debt. You need to set a plan to get out of debt, and you also need to learn how to use debt wisely, because not all debt is bad debt. There is such a thing as good debt, as Carolyn can tell you. <laughs> mm -hmm. There is such a thing as good, debt. good there's debt. a way. There's a way to use debt wisely. So once you get out of debt, this is going to free up money for you to be able to invest, to build wealth and so on. So let's go over debt first and then we'll get into building wealth. So the first thing that you need to do is apply for your credit report. You need to know where you stand. You need to know, okay, what the actual situation is. How bad is it? How bad am I in debt? How do lenders see me? How do they view me? What's on my actual credit report? And a lot of people don't know that we do have credit reporting agencies in Jamaica and the banks and even the telecoms now, even the utilities are looking at that credit report before they decide whether they're going to, uh, you can apply for, whether you can uh, benefit from a postpaid plan, mm -hmm. phone plan, for example, 
as opposed to a prepaid. If you want to go po postpaid, they're going to look at your credit report. If you want to apply to Carolyn, they're going to look at your credit report. If you want to apply, sometimes even to places like courts, they might take a look at your credit report. So the first thing you need to do is to know how those lenders see you. What is the situation? The next thing that you want to do is use that information as well as what you know about yourself to, to evaluate your current debt situation. So make a list of all the loans that you have outstanding. Uh, write down the balances on them and write down, importantly, what the interest rate on those loans are. And some of them may surprise you. You might not even know what the interest rate on some of your loans are. So various places, most of the financial institutions, like the larger ones, are going to disclose that you're getting this car loan at 8.5%. You're getting your mortgage at 7.5%. But when you come to things like the micro loans now and the higher purchases, they don't really tell you what the actual interest rate is. All they tell you is every Friday, pay me $2,000. And they never really disclose, unless you read the fine print, what the actual interest rate is. And you would be shocked to learn that some of those loans, the interest rate is as high as 80 and 100 percent. Yeah, extremely high interest rate. So whenever you see somebody tell you, just pay me back you know, X amount every week, consider what is the actual interest rate. As a matter of fact, before I came here today, I went on a popular... Uh, website, a higher purchase store, a popular store, to see what their latest deals are. And I saw the cash price for a 65-inch TV. And the price for the TV, I wrote it down, 178000 Jamaican dollars. And it was on sale for $133,000 if you paid cash. Or you could get this 65-inch TV for, for less than $2,000 a week. 1,900, where is, where's the price? I wrote it down, $1,977.23 a week. So $2,000 a week, okay, can manage that. Mm -hmm. But I want you all right now to check out your calculator. Check, check, every phone have a calculator, right? Check it out, I'll give you a minute. Check out your phone, open up the calculator app on your phone. And how long, so when you read the fine print, how long is this? loan. They don't really position it as a loan, but it really is a loan. Read the fine print. It's a three-year loan. You're going to pay these people back in three years, $2,000 a week. How many weeks does that work out to? 156 weeks. So times 156 times $2,000, and at the end of three years, you pay $308,000 for this TV that you could have paid cash for, that's $133,000. So you have paid for the TV more than twice. You could have bought two TVs and pick up something extra. So, and it works out to 130% interest rate. You wouldn't believe it because it don't, it's not framed in that kind of way. You would have been better off using a different type of debt, such as taking a loan from Carolyn at a much, much lower interest much lower, rate. 13 to 18 percent. 13 to 18 percent interest rate buying that item. And you're done with it after a couple of months, after a few months. So uh, assess the different types of debt that you have in your life. Uh, I don't know if you would be able to. You can try it. You can <laughs> to go to, to the police. If you already have these types of uh, items in your home and that type of arrangement, Try going there and see if they'll be willing to, to let you pay off the balance early. Get a loan if you have to and pay off the balance early. I don't know if they'll be because you already signed the agreement, but at least you know for the future as well. So that's one way. Uh, the next thing, so you want to list them by the total balance, the interest rate, and how long you have remaining on the loan. And then you want to make a plan to pay off your loan. So there are different things, different strategies that you can take. One of them is debt consolidation. And debt consolidation means taking one big loan to pay off all your other loans. So if you have credit card, and I didn't even talk about credit card loans, guess what the average credit card rate in Jamaica is? Anybody want to guess? This is where I'd ask if, we, if this was a live event with people in the, in the room, I'd ask people to raise their hands. But the average credit card rate, interest rate in Jamaica is 40%. 40%. 
40%, and that's according to the, the Bank of Jamaica's credit condition survey. The most recent one was June to September 2020, 40%. The lowest credit card rate right now that I am aware of is 34%. A lot of credit cards are in the 50-odd percent range. So they're paying very high interest rates on things like credit cards, microloans, higher purchase. So, so you can consolidate those types of debt, especially all those high interest rates. Take out one large loan, 13 to 18% from Carolyn, for example, and pay off all those high interest debt. That's called debt consolidation. That's one strategy. Another strategy is called the debt snowball. So if you're familiar with the concept of a snowball, it can start off small, and then it rolls down the hill, and it gets bigger and bigger and bigger and bigger and bigger, and, bigger, mm -hmm. and then at the end of it, you're done with all your debt. So you can choose to pay off either your highest interest debt first, or you can choose to pay off your smallest debt first. And I, know, I don't know how many of you are familiar with Dave Ramsey. He's a popular guy on YouTube, on social media. He has a great podcast, too. He does, has his people do the debt-free scream, I'm debt-free. And his recommendation is that you pay off the smallest debt first because it gives you that win, that feeling of winning, like, yeah, I accomplished something. I, I won. I was able to pay off this debt. And then you move on to the next debt, and the next biggest debt, and the next biggest debt. Uh, I personally prefer going with the highest interest rate first, for obvious reasons, because if you are paying 55% interest on that credit card, it's just going to set you back. It really, really makes a huge difference when you're able to tackle that debt. All right, so now that we've talked about debt, the next thing that we want to do, and perhaps we can do these two things in tandem, is look at our expenses. So track your expenses and make a budget. I'm not going to go into too much detail with this because we covered this extensively uh, on the last webinar that I presented at, and that's what got Mr. Craig here in trouble. So, so he says, anyway, way to blame me. I don't think that's my fault at all. So you can go back on Carolyn's Facebook page and look at that presentation about budgeting. But one of the big points that I made then was that before you can set a budget, you need to track your expenses. You need to actually know what you're spending money on every month. Where is your money going every month? So get an app like Home Budget App is the one that I like to use and that I recommend a lot. And put in every single, at least for one month, log every single expense. Every time you spend money on something, log it in your phone in the Home Budget App or another app that you might find that, that you like. And then at the end of the month, you can see where your money actually went and then use that as the basis to make a more realistic budget. So once you are doing that now, the next step is to build wealth and maximize your income. And this is my favorite part to speak about, actually. Let's get this money, right? <laughs> Anybody familiar with me? I say that a lot. So we want to be building wealth and maximizing our income. And the thing about wealth building, it, why I went through, through debt reduction strategies earlier, is that it's really hard to do when you are in debt, but it's not impossible, especially depending on the type of debt that you have. For example, if you have a car loan or a mortgage, that's not necessarily debt that you need to pay off all of that completely before you can start building wealth and investing. You can still have that type of debt and invest at the same time. Uh, but if you have the high interest debt, the credit card debt, uh, et cetera, that's something that you need to tackle in order for you to take the next step and build wealth. So there are three keys to wealth creation. Three keys, three pillars to wealth creation. Number one is investing. So we look at things like the stock market. We look at bonds. We look at other types of securities. And you can speak to an investment advisor, open an investment account at any one of the brokerage firms in Jamaica. You can DM me, ask me questions. I'll be happy to help and you know, guide you along that path. Look at you know, my beginner's playlist, for example, on YouTube. Number two is, and before I move on to number two, so investing really is the, the easiest one to get started in, because you can get started literally with as little as 100 Jamaican dollars. It, is, it does not take a whole lot of effort nor a whole lot of money to get started with investing in the stock market, for example. The second key to wealth creation now is real estate investing. 
So people make, and people especially in a time like COVID, you would have noticed that real estate prices have not gone down. In fact, some of them probably have gone up. And, one, and that is because real estate is considered a safe haven investment. So a lot of people have flocked to real estate, put their money in real estate. The disadvantage, obviously, is that it requires a lot more money up front. So you would either have to have that cash in hand or take out some type of financing, so a mortgage through a financial institution in order to get involved in the real estate uh, space, whether it is buying and selling for a profit or using Airbnb, uh, we sp you guys spoke about that in the previous segment, or however you want to get involved in real estate or long-term rentals, because that can bring in passive income for you every month, whereas you just sit on and collect. So people are paying you rent every month and you don't really have anything that you need to do. You just collect that money in your bank account each month. And then the third key to wealth creation is entrepreneurship, starting your own business, which can be quite lucrative, but the disadvantage is it is the most time consuming of the three. Easily, you are going to put blood, sweat, and tears into building a business. It can take several years for you to see a return, but if done right, it can be probably the most profitable of the three. So, and the, the one thing that all three have in common is ownership of assets. So you want to start owning assets that are going to earn you money. You want to start owning things as well that are going to earn you passive income. So when I say sit on and collect, I literally mean that you can collect money, you can make money in your sleep. Have your money work for you. So those are the keys to renovating your finances. I really hope that you guys take this to heart. And you can DM me all over social media if you want information. You can link people at Caroland as well. They can definitely give you a hand. Well, thank you so much, Garila. That was such an engaging presentation. And um, we're going to go to a, sh a short break to allow you guys to come up with your questions, and then uh, we'll feel them when we come back. You have a plan. Getting a loan to do it shouldn't feel like an adventure or have you jumping through hoops. It should be quick, convenient, and affordable. It should be a VME loan powered by Carland, the completely online loan solution that fits your lifestyle. Apply from anywhere on any device in 15 minutes, get your answer within one business day, and receive your funds within one to three business days. Get the money you need when you need it. VME loan powered by Carland. Get funded fast. That room you want to fix up, now you can do it quickly and affordably. Get the money you need to spice up your space. VME Loan, powered by Carolyn. Get funded fast. All right, welcome back, ladies and gentlemen. And we are now going to take your questions. So the first question is... What should I do if I spend more than I budgeted for? The All classic right. case. <laughs> all right, so don't panic. First of all, this is why you are supposed to create a realistic budget. So if you know that you always do your nails and you don't have that on your budget, make sure that you put that on there so that when the end of the month comes and you, you went over budget because you did your nails and you promised yourself you wouldn't, then you know that's already accounted for. But if you do spend more than you had planned to spend, then all you have to do is readjust your budget. So budgets are flexible things. They are not you know, set in stone that it is there in chiseled, like literally chiseled in, <laughs> in stone, especially using the software that we use today, Excel spreadsheets and apps and so on. You can just tweak your budget. So if you realize that you spent more than you had planned to spend, then you look, take a look back at your budget and see, OK, what can I cut back on? So if you had planned in your budget to spend $10,000 on entertainment this month, but you realize that you went over budget on food, then you might need to cut back on the entertainment uh, budget for this month. Or you can't go out again as you had planned or, or something else. So you can look at other areas in your budget that have some flexibility and just readjust. Or you can put it over to next month and readjust for the following month so that you have the money to pay back for this month. 
All right, thank you. And we have one more from, we had one from Desi Francis who was asking you how, um, she just asked simply, how do I invest in real estate? How do you invest in real estate? All right, well, that's a, that's a, a, a long question, <laughs> it's a long process. So you can use, if you have the money, if you have a lot of money up front, you go out and find a house or whatever property that you want to invest in and buy it. If not, then the strategy that most people use is getting a mortgage. Mm -hmm. and, but then you also need to do the research as to what type of property do you want to invest in? What is the reason that I want to invest? Do I want to flip this house? Uh, that's become popular on like HT, HGTV and a and &E and those channels. They buy a property, so they'll find a, a, a rundown property in a good neighborhood, renovate it, and then sell it at a much higher price so they make a profit from it. Or you may want to have a more long-term strategy of rental. So you buy a property, and this property is a rental property. Then I'm going to earn income from this every single month. So if you want that ongoing income, you can do rental property. You can do Airbnb property. Not the best right now because there is no tourism. Mm -hmm. But well, you know, when tourism rebounds, Airbnb could be a good way to, to invest in property as well. You, you even have people who who would rent a property and then sub-rent, sublet as Airbnb, so you don't necessarily have to buy a property to do a short-term rental like that, as long as it's allowed under the agreement. So there are many different ways that you can invest in real estate. Okay. And, and another way is also to invest in real estate stocks. Yeah. So you have like the, the REITs, Real Estate Investment Trust, you have Proven REIT, you have uh, First Rock Capital, you have uh, uh, Panjam Investments, those are companies on the stock, listed on the stock market, and how they make money is by investing in real estate. So they basically do the heavy listing, lifting, you invest in them, and when they make a profit, you get a portion of that profit. Thank you very much, Khalil. I'm sure the, the listeners, the viewers, enjoyed your presentation. I know they learned a lot. I certainly did. And um, just thank you again for all your efforts. Thank you, Craig.